Personally speaking for me, I'm a big believer of punching above weight, right? You've got to do more than what you can. And if in the collective, everybody does that, then you're going to get the unexpected outcomes. We were two when we started. We're nine of us now. We've got folks from past entrepreneurial background. We've got aerospace engineers. We've got folks that worked in Toyota and Philips, uh, folks who worked on the policy framework. I think what the common thread that holds us together is um, the desire to work with audacious founders and to build the future of tomorrow and watch it being built in front of us. You have to take risk, you have to be ahead of the curve, you have to be bold. So being contrarian is sort of part of our thesis. Look ahead, look in areas where nobody is looking, look at founders and innovations in a, with a different lens. I think it's the immense energy and learning of being around really smart people who are trying to change the world. fortunate that we built a culture that works around humility, that works around being grounded. This is believes in hard work and, uh, and doing audacious things. It's been a journey that spanned over seven years till date, from R&D to uh, launch of what you see behind me, the F-77s. And uh, Special has been an integral part of the journey. We've got a lot of talent, we've got a great handle on the tech and the manufacturing part of the ecosystem. But when it comes to creating trends and building technology, we still look to the east or the west. And fundamentally, we wanted to reverse this trend. Right? And that, in essence, is the reason for Ultraviolet's existence. We said we'll build the best looking EV motorcycle in the country, and I think we've gotten that already. What we recognize when it comes to the automation of the robots and you know, the way the robots are being deployed, they remain mostly as machines that cannot understand what's happening in their environment. They don't have any basic sentience. So on the basis of the sentience is the way vision evolves. And uh, there was even hardware that is absent. So we built the whole stack from scratch. The first thing Vishay said was that uh, I'm always excited to talk to founders that have hardware on the table. And he took that first meeting with an excitement around what we're building and not, uh, not an attempt to compare us with the existing trends uh, was very welcome. The world will see large hydrogen farms the way we see the solar farms today. But the current industry and tech doesn't allow that. And this is essentially what Nutris is solving now. Nutris develops this massively scalable, affordable and highly efficient electrolysis, which does not use any membrane or air earth metal. We are building the technology infrastructure for the green hydrogen evolution. Uh, one came from a thermodynamics background, the other one came from an electrochemistry background, and they're building something very, very proprietary in the green hydrogen value chain that's uh, going to make India a lot more greener in the future. At Galaxy, what we are trying to do is to build a multi-sensor satellite constellation to provide best-in-class image intelligence solution to our customers. 
this is something that is very essential for real-time applications like natural disasters. But there is no such satellite that exists that gives a ready-made fused solution. That is what we are building. We are basically commoditizing satellite images by providing an all-time, all-weather, intuitive satellite images. Uh, we can't consume like we've been doing. We've done enough damage to this world. So we have to produce these materials we need. Now, what are these materials? It could be food, it could be colors, fragrances, uh, medicines, it could be textiles, it could be dyes. All of this can be made in a small fermenter with very little footprint. What we are trying to do at Firmbox is basically disrupt traditional supply chains and using synthetic biology and biotech tools to come up with biomaterials which are alternatives to traditional materials. We want to build cities in space. Uh, it is definitely one of the craziest ideas uh, mankind has had um, across the years. The early part of getting to building cities in space is to make sure that you can repair what's in space already. So we work in propulsion in space, we work in um, uh, robotics, and we work in sensing. These are the three areas that we are focusing on. And using these three, at this moment, we are uh, generating our own revenue by servicing satellites. Satellites are the only industry where there is no servicing station anywhere, right? So we found a very good um, uh, opportunity, a market opportunity to come in. And our belief is with the way the sector is growing, a lot more satellites are getting to space year on year on year. And a lot of them will need for someone to take care of them in space when things go wrong. We are actually developing a completely new way to make batteries, which means it's a completely new uh, design, uh, product, uh, completely new manufacturing process, which means we need completely new manufacturing machines. For us, the biggest challenge was, hey, are people really going to back something like this where you need to change everything that is known to us in how do we make batteries? Our purpose is not only to build cells in India, but make the cells which is much more efficient, which will be cost effective, and actually inherently solves the problem of lithium ion cells. One thing I realized was, a lot of people are building stuff to go to space, but they didn't have a way to get there. So we wanted to build something that will actually take them to space quickly, nimbly, easily, and so on. We've been working on this for quite some time now. Uh, but on the day of launch, I think uh, that's the day that like, you, know, you announced to the world that you've built a product. It's just not within the company, it's just not within a country. It's, it's announcing the world that you've built a product. And seeing that emotions echo across the globe, that was exciting for us. There's nothing a thing that I would want to change because story has been pitch perfect for us so far. That's something that is like you know, exciting because we also got onboarded with the right set of people. And Vishesh being the first person, Special being the first thing, I think that's, that's also helped us in a favor to choose the right people over the years as well. What we started out doing was to be able to develop the basic technologies required for an electric VTOL uh, aircraft to be made, like a passenger grade one, as frugally as possible at a slightly smaller scale. So that's where we are actually making something like these, which are fairly large cargo aircraft that are at subscale, but autonomous. We don't really have people sitting in there and so on. So we have that entire ecosystem of what it takes to actually make planes like very modern planes uh, that we have set up here. We have got to the cargo level. In the next couple of years, we will actually be commercializing the cargo as we are developing the passenger plane, putting it through certification and getting into operations. 
mostly electric planes do not actually have a very large range, so we can't go from like an airport to airport. So the best we can do is vertical takeoff and landing, so that uh, we try to beat traffic within cities. We have a huge amount of traffic in India uh, on city roads, um, so we are trying to solve that problem. At the heart of all of this is curiosity, right? And a view to say, what is real venture capital? Venture by itself, definition means you got to venture out and do something new, unique, and possibly contrarian to what the world thinks. Special should continue to stand for being a long-term partner for audacious founders that want to build disruptive tech from India for the world and beyond. Thank you.